To an experienced driver, steering is fairly simple and it's easy to forget that it took some learning to make it simple. So in this video, I'm gonna give you plenty of tips to help you turn left and right more successfully. First tip is when to start turning when you turn left. Most new drivers make the mistake of starting the turn now because the bend is at the bottom of the front window. So they feel like, right, the bend's here, let's start turning. But you'll only get close to the curb and possibly hit it if you start steering now. You actually wanna get the bend alongside you. So when the bend feels like it's next to you outside the side of your door, then you can start steering. If you steer now, it's very hard to hit the curb. But if you steer too early, it's very likely you will hit the curb. The reason why new drivers tend to steer too early is because things are a lot further than they actually look. The end of this wooden wall looks like it's at the bottom of the window. And when learners see something at the bottom of the front window, they assume that they are there, that they are close, but they're not. I'm gonna get out of the car now and show you how far away the end of that wall actually is. Now, I promise I haven't moved the car. The end of that wall is a whole car length in front of the car. If I try to steer now, I'm only going to hit the wall. What I need to do is get the car halfway alongside the end of that wall and then turn if I wanted to turn around it. I'm back inside the car now and it's fairly obvious if I was to steer left, I would just hit this wall. Let's pretend this wall is actually the pavement but raised so it's easier to see and I'm going to show you how far forward you need to go before you can start steering. Ideally, you want the end of the wall, which would be the end of the pavement, if it was the pavement, to be alongside the middle of your car, which is around about here. If you steer now, you won't hit it. But the reality is you can't see the pavement because it's too low down. It's not raised up. So you have to remember where the bend starts. So at the moment, it's somewhere near the road name sign and the beginning of that triangle. So I know if I get the middle of my car near the road name sign around about here and I feel like I'm sitting on the triangle but that's a good time to start steering. The next tip is how much to steer. Usually in most cars on most junctions like this around about three quarters of a turn of the wheel should do it but that is a very rough guide just to give you an idea of how much you're going to be twiddling this wheel. It can be as little as half a turn or it can be full turn as far as it will go. But the real key of knowing how much to steer is knowing where to look. So I'm gonna get to that place where I can steer, which is next to this road name sign as discussed earlier. Then I'm gonna look at the middle of my new road over there at the end of the bend. I'll look at that point. Then I'm gonna aim my left knee towards that point. Once I feel like my left knee is heading that way, I won't add any more steering. So I'm adding steering now, looking at that point, focused on that point. And when I feel like my left knee is heading there, then I know I have enough steering. I'm near the line now, so I'm gonna make sure it's safe to go. And then I'm gonna let the car come round. And as I come round, I'm gonna start looking far up the road to help me judge when to straighten. Aiming my left knee straight up the road, I know how much to turn the wheel back to straight and how quickly to turn it back to straight without going over to the right or the left. Now it's one thing turning left when you have a nice gentle curve to the curb, as you do here, but it's another matter when the curb has a sharp corner, such as it does here. How do you deal with this without hitting the curb? Well, it's quite simple really. Firstly, don't go near the curb. That's a mistake most people make. Just stay in the middle of your lane and go straight. And you're gonna to have to get to the end of the road nice and straight like I am now. Make sure no one's coming either side and then move forwards until the curb, the end of the pavement where the person's walking, is about halfway through the middle of your door or slightly further back. Then make sure it's safe again, steer fully and you will go around without hitting the curb. You will need full steering for those sharp corners though. Now here are some tips for turning right. I'm gonna turn into Crefield Road on the right here. Firstly, when should you start steering? Well, you wanna start steering when the middle of the road you're entering looks like it's roughly in line with your wing mirror. Although it looks like it's in line with your wing mirror, it's actually more in line with the front of the car. Then look at the middle of your lane about a car length in and focus on that point. Keep adding steering until it feels like your left knee is going into the middle. Then look far and start straightening until it feels your left knee is going straight. 
you're guiding the car via your left knee, the important thing is to look at the right bit of the road to aim for. And if I'm confusing you by saying, use your left knee to judge how much to steer and where to place the vehicle, there is a video in the top right hand corner of your screen all about how to do that. I find it a really effective way of helping new drivers judge how much to steer and judge where to place the car within their half of the road. If your steering wheel is on this side, you'll be using your left knee, and if the steering wheel is on the other side, you'll be using your right knee, but it's whatever knee is closest to the middle of the car. And sticking to that point, I drive on the left side of the road because I'm in the UK, but if you drive on the right hand side of the road, it's fine, this video can still work for you, you just have to switch things around. My left turns are the equivalent to your right turns, and my right turns are the equivalent to your left turns. Many new drivers struggle with straightening up after steering because they wait for the car to finish the turn before they straighten up. Let me show you what I mean here. So they add the steering and then they hold it steady, wait for the car to finish the turn and then start to straighten up, which is too late and leaves them going towards the other side of the road and possibly some oncoming cars. It takes you a couple of seconds to unwind the wheel, so you have to start straightening up before the car has finished its turn. Normally when you're around about 75% of the way through the turn, you wanna start taking the steering off, but looking far up the road will really help you judge when to do that. Strangely enough, what can help you get better at straightening the wheel after making a turn is to let go of the wheel. Bear with me, I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna make this right turn again and then I'm gonna let go of the wheel. So I'm adding steering now. It's coming around about three quarters of the way around. I let go of the wheel, as you can see. Then I go back on the wheel again once it's finished self-straightening. The car self-straightens. This is a learning exercise, not what I expect my pupils to do long-term. When they witness the car self-straighten, it's like a light bulb moment. It's like, ah, they see how early it needs to start straightening and how quickly it straightens. I'll tell them when to let go of the wheel and I'll warn them about it, but it really helps them pick up that skill. Then they can start doing it themselves. But also, as a bonus, it helps them relax because quite often new drivers are gripping the wheel really tightly, which doesn't help the control. But when they realize and understand that the car wants to go in a straight line and if they let go of the wheel, it will self-straighten, that certainly goes a long way in helping them be more relaxed behind the wheel. And if you're wondering why I get them to do it themselves and not just always let go of the wheel and let it self-straighten, and that's because cars self-straighten at different speeds depending on different conditions. Different road conditions can make a difference, but also the amount you accelerate will make a difference. And also the design of the car will make a difference. The steering axis inclination is what engineers use to make the car self-straighten. And they can have cars that self-straighten very quickly or in a bit more of a lazy manner. Here's a demonstration on how acceleration affects how quickly the steering self-straightens. I'm gonna steer fully to the right. There's always a bit of bounce back when you let go of the wheel from fully turned, but it's not self-straightening, it's staying still. And that's because I'm accelerating at exactly zero. If I start accelerating slowly, you'll see the steering starts to straighten slowly. But if I accelerate a bit quicker, see how much more quickly there it's self-straightened until a pretty much perfect straight line. Probably one of the best tips I can give you when it comes to steering is not to hold the wheel super tight and over control the car. Instead, listen to the car by placing your hands gently on the wheel and feel where the car wants to go. If the car wants to go where you want to go, good, let it carry on. Most of the time it probably will. And if you need to guide the car, just give a little bit of guidance to keep you on track. That's what experienced drivers do. In the UK, most instructors are gonna recommend you steer the wheel something like this. This is known as the push-pull method. It's where you pass the wheel from hand to hand at the top of the wheel and the bottom of the wheel, and you basically keep repeating that. In some other countries, they actually recommend you do what a lot of UK driving instructors frown upon, and that's to cross your arms over the steering like this. The trouble with this method is your arm goes over the airbag, and the airbag comes out at a very fast speed. So if that deploys and your arm's between the airbag and your head, that arm's gonna hit you in the head. And if you've got a wristwatch on, that can do some serious damage, which is why I'm not the biggest fan of crossing your arms over the airbag. 
For the UK driving test, they don't really mind as long as you have good control of the car and you keep both your hands on the wheel most of the time, then you should be fine. With my customers, I rarely need to give help in this department. They tend to make their own way of steering fairly quickly on their own. In fact, if I give them a method, it can actually be more harmful than helpful some of the time. I will give them a method if they're clearly struggling or they're just using a steering method which is like really awkward. I might say, hang on a minute, that, that's not really working. But if they're getting by on their own, I'll just let it go. I will warn them about the airbag and explain that to them. But other than that, it is their own choice. However, I don't accept wax on wax off because you can slip off and I have done myself, which can be quite scary. So if I see them do that, I will tell them to use their hands to steer the wheel. Well, wax on wax off is technically with your hands, but you know, your claws properly hold the wheel and turn it to make sure you have good control. Another very important part of getting the steering right is getting your speed right and your approach to junctions right. I'm not gonna go into that in this video because this video will just get too long, but I have made a video all about that. I'll link to it up there in the top right hand corner of your screen. Well, I hope this video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. Check out Conningwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and you want to insure yourself on somebody else's car for practice, Conningwood are great because you can do so without affecting their policy or risking their no claims bonus. Via the link at the moment, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, check out confused.com. With Confused, you fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back so you can compare who's cheapest. And you can change the car on that quote form so you can compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links does support this channel, but it doesn't cost you anything. So thank you very much. Check out Facebook and Instagram if you wish. They're both Conquer Driving. And subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.